and we'll send links and everything to you after this. Hang on the line when we when I land the plane, hang on for a few minutes so we can debrief, okay? <laughs> All right. Hey, Caitlin. Hey, Nika. Hello, Paris. All right, it's three o'clock. Hey, Jaybird. It's three o'clock on the dot, so we are ready Ooh. to rock. Welcome to day five of the five days of focus. Yeah. Happy Friday. You've made it. We've made it. We're all excited to be here. It's very exciting. Uh, the five days of focus has been such a gift because it's our opportunity to, to share what we do here at Success Bully, but also, also to make a difference. You know, like uh, I'm very passionate about goal setting and accountability. And this gives us an opportunity to reach more people as like with a, with a friendly kick in the pants, a plan and some accountability, you can do anything. And I am, I am passionate about sharing that. Uh, today we have a very special guest. Uh, we have Precious Williams with us. So Precious is gonna smile pretty for a second because I'm gonna walk you through a quick exercise. Please I'm gonna do. make some quick announcements. And then we're gonna ask Precious all the things about her experiences, especially her experiences in your 90 day way, our coaching program that we just opened the doors on. So all the things. So before we get started, I'm going to ask you all to humor me very quickly. Hair, humor me very quickly. Let's close our eyes, drop those shoulders, make that back nice and straight and your feet flat on the ground. So let's go ahead and take three deep cleansing breaths. So let's go ahead and inhale one. Go ahead and exhale. Inhale two. Go ahead and exhale. Inhale three. Go ahead and exhale. Now I want you to find your feet. Find your feet. Your feet should be flat on the floor. As thoughts come to mind, gently let them go. Let go of your to-do list. Let go of those things that you haven't done right this week. Let go of the losses. Just find your feet. Concentrate on your toes. Yeah. Now I want you to find all 10 of your toes. Go ahead and wiggle them. Okay. And let's take one last deep breath. Go ahead, inhale, hold it, and exhale. When you're ready, open your eyes. Yeah, whoa, everybody feeling centered. So in case you missed it, I am Keita Williams, founder and chief strategist of Successfully. Successfully is an elite accountability practice, so that makes me your personal professional butt kicker. And uh, in the last four out of five days <laughs> of the five days of focus, on day one, we talked about our SWOT analysis. So that was, how do you know if you've been an ass if you haven't done an assessment? <laughs> Well, day two, we focused on impact. So we got really clear on where we we're going to put our energy. What's that one overarching thing? And day three, we focus on having a game plan. So taking that focus area, turning it into a smart goal, and then breaking that down into steps and really getting clear about what we're going to do over the next 90 days. Yesterday, we talked about my favorite topic, accountability. <laughs> And so who are you going to be accountable to? And if you need support around that, we are opening the doors to our group coaching program called Your 90 Day Way. Uh, that's launching in the next couple of weeks. So there are there are limited seats in the group. Um, and we have extended the length of the group. So while 90 days is where we play from in the sense of it takes 33 to 66 days to develop a new habit, 90 days before you'll, you see results. In this special program that we are doing in honor of my birthday, we have extended the time of the program to six months. So you get your 90 days to get your rhythm and then you get another 90 days with us uh, to get that high performance next level stuff. And the way that the program is set up is that we have weekly coaching calls with me. You have weekly accountability check-ins. You are assigned an accountability partner and you have access to our accountability tracker, which creates a score scorecard to show what show your progress over your six month commitment, right? So if you're trying to figure out if this is the right program for you, I want you to ask yourself, do you identify as a delightful pro procrastinator? Do you have a brilliant, brilliant project that you can't seem to get off the, the ground because you keep waiting for it to be perfect? Are you a foffer? Do you have the fear of failure? You're such a high achiever that the idea of failing is, is uh, paralyzing for you? Or are you a fosser? 
the fear of success is so big for you that uh, you don't even get started, right? Or are you a velvet rudder? Meaning you have accomplished all the things you wanted to do and you're asking yourself what's next, but the idea of taking that next step is scary for you. If you identify as any one of those things, please reach out to us. Uh, this program is not for you. If you have, ex you can excuse yourself out of anything. If you have an excuse for everything, why you ain't do something, why you didn't execute, uh, why, why your life looks the way that it does. If you have an excuse for everything, this program's not for you. This program is not for you if you are waiting for things to be absolutely perfect. Uh, imperfect action trumps perfect inaction every time. Uh, if you only want to see the big picture, this program is not for you. And if you are perfectly content not using your talents, time, and treasure to build the life you deserve, if you're content not using that to be who you're meant to be, this program's not for you. And if you see procrastination as a way of life, this is also not a program for you. All right. So now if you identify, if this program is for you, please reach out to our concierges. Uh, Monica is your concierge. If your uh, first name begins with letters A through K, Maggie is your concierge. If you're, uh, <laughs> I can't, I'm so ridiculous. I'd say it like that. Maggie's your concierge. If your, your first name begins with the letters L through Z and you, you can reach out to us uh, book a call if you need additional information on the program. You can go to your90dayway.com if you want to reserve your spot right now, because we have limited spots. Reserve your spot right now. Go ahead and click on that. <laughs> okay. Get up on it, y'all. Uh, so before I, I uh, transition over to um, our delightful and wonderful guest, Precious, I do want to walk you through one quick exercise. And so one of the things that uh, when we're thinking about goal setting and accountability, part of that is in your tracking, right? So if you are not tracking your progress, how do you know if you've made progress? So one of the first things I want you to do is on day five, page 14 of your workbook. Now, never mind. I printed it in black and white because I'm cheap. We talked about this. We talked about how I don't print nothing in color. Uh, <laughs> so what I want you to first track before we break the goals down and put it in any tracker, I wanna understand what you're doing with your day, right? So I want you to first write out what your ideal day looks like, and then I want you to share with us what actually happened, right? So when you design what you thought you were gonna do and then what actually happened. And I really want you to pay attention to your time sucks. Right. So where are things getting off the rails for you? Are you finding yourself down a social media hole? So don't don't click off of this. I know it's counterintuitive for me to tell you to stay off social media while we own Facebook. But like what actually happened to your time? Uh, did you have a project that took way longer than you thought it was going to? Uh, what derailed you? So for the first part of the exercise is what is your ideal utopian society day look like? And then what really happens on an actual day? So what happens? Share that with us because we're happy to help you really kind of strategize around that time piece and that time responsibility, practicing time honesty and ruling your time. So your big homework today is your ideal versus your actual day. And we have some bonus content because we're overachievers. Of course, the five days of focus has to go longer than five days. <laughs> because <laughs> we're overachievers. I have some bonus content around uh, time management and tracking that we'll be rolling out over the weekend and into early next week, all right? So come on back, more of that. Yeah, hey, Kaylin, Utopian Society Day, yes. <laughs> so without further ado, <laughs> I want to introduce you to the amazing Precious L. Williams. Precious is not only... Um, a good friend of mine, but she's also one of my favorite clients. And she believed in this business from this coaching practice from the very start and has uh, uh, been a champion, a supporter and a client over the last three and a half years. So I am so proud of what she's been able to accomplish. And I'm so proud of her as a friend. I'm so proud of her as a client. I'm so proud of her as a sister in arms. I'm just proud <laughs> to, to be in her circle of influence. So Precious L. Williams is known as the killer pitch master and she can help you slay the competition with her killer elevator pitches, media pitches, and investor pitches. I'm so excited that I can read so good today. 
Precious is <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Precious is a world class master communicator who works with successful entrepreneurs and speakers to help them take their professional pitching and speaking skills to the next level. With over 25 years of experience in creating uh, unique speaking and uh, public speaking techniques, Williams is known for innovative training programs, and she serviced the top of the top, the Fortune 100 companies, including Google, Microsoft, LinkedIn, eBay. More to come because we're keeping up. She is a 13-time National Business Elevator Pitch Champion. I'm going to say that one more time. 13 times. <laughs> She's been on top television shows, including uh, season eight of ABC Shark Tank. She's been in Forbes magazine. She's been on CNN. She's been on ABC. She's been on MSNBC, Wall Street Journal. She's been in a movie called The Leap right and all, all types of things in 2019 this is right this is like this one gave me i'm gonna try not to cry uh precious became a best-selling author of the number one business book are y'all ready for the title bad bitches with power pitches for women entrepreneurs and speakers only and has been featured on a Times square billboard she's been in top podcasts and stages all around the world um, the philosophy of her killer pitch is evident in the strategic and personalized creative communication that she puts forth, that she helps her, uh, her entrepreneurs and clients do. Uh, she's a serial entrepreneur, an international professional speaker, a corporate trainer. Oh, she brings everything to life and she's so authentic and so real and will share um, her life with you in a way that will touch you. So I am so proud of Precious. Uh, she is also a graduate of Spelman College, Rutgers School of Law. She lives in Brooklyn and is fabulous all day, every day. Not if, try, you, girl, try. If, if you are looking for Precious, you can find her at perfectpitchesbyprecious.com. Uh, most recently, uh, Precious wrapped up our uh, Your 90 Day Way Sprint. So our last group coaching, Precious is a graduate of that. So from there, Precious, I'm going to toss it over to you. I know I feel I, I like yelled and did a lot of exclamation points. So why don't you tell, share a little more about your background with our viewers? Well, may I, may I start with this? First of all, queen, that's what you are to me. <laughs> you were there for me. You know, as you were reading that, and all of that sounds great, but you know I'm much more than accomplishment. Oh, I know the backstory. I but know the backstory. you were there when it was really bad. You know, when I was not just being homeless, but being depressed and, you know, just not wanting to be on this earth anymore. And I was looking at something this morning that just touched my heart. Do you remember when you sent me the you sent me all the stuff, the oh, face masks and all this beautiful oh, things yeah, to remind me of who yeah. I am? I, package. I still have I still I still have some of it you're like well first of you, I kept it because that showed me love it showed oh. me that first of all you do kick my butt and that oh, yeah. is what yeah. a success bully will do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not only that when I was in my darkest hour and I was afraid to talk to anybody about the things that I was going through I could call on you you will whip me up <laughs> give me tough love then you give me that sister girl love and then you'd be like okay so what we doing <laughs> Okay. Okay. I just need to get that out. And you're like, uh, okay, so I need you to, what will we do? And I together. love that. I love that. So I was looking at the basket today with some of the stuff and some of the stuff I just kept just because my girl loved me enough to love me through a difficult situation. And as you read my accomplishments, I realized how much of the journey you were there for me mm -hmm. as a success bully before the success bully even got started. You know, when I think about our relationship, whether it, it started with Success Bully or it started before that, and it did start before that, the most beautiful thing that I got out of just working with you and just being your friend and watching you create and cultivate something that is so amazing for women, especially women, you know, just, I didn't have confidence. And I know I've come across very differently today, but you knew what I really experienced on the inside and being afraid to, you know what you taught me and I probably have it wrong, but you'll, you'll get it. Radical action, radical outcomes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So because of you, I took pitching to another level. Yes. I wrote a number one bestselling book and then I wrote another number one bestselling book because of you. I'm featured on a television show called Roz the Expert Maker, and I'm one of her experts. Yeah! I've been <laughs> approached by a major network for another show. Now, you know, these come, the, the show things always come because you know, you know the personality, but it's different now because it's not about the showiness. It's about 
you're an expert, Precious. Mm -hmm. You've established yourself. You show me how to truly be visible, but still authentic. So I, I'll show up with one tooth. I'll show up with hair all over the all over the place. And you allowed me to really just step into who I really am because of your because of that radical action. You know, I was afraid to do certain things. I was right, afraid, like, right, right, right. I ain't like, quite just ready. Do it, Precious. Like, like the bad bitches in power pitches live three-day experience so we're still moving forward because of you you know i got sixty thousand dollars of sponsorship get into it and it's still not happening it's not happening until next summer <laughs> you know? so in that so in in the in the in the the 90 day i, I feel like it was just like kind of like you were on us like okay what doesn't get measure it doesn't get managed or what does it manage to get yeah, you yeah. need to see yourself and i love seeing that 100 percent next to mine because i knew i did the work as yala always says you have to do the work and i it wasn't to impress you it was just to show you that you have a gift and a talent it's not just oh i'm going to i'm gonna listen to her talk you know you were like um i'm gonna need you to come correct because if you don't come into this meeting i'm gonna need you to be about that life you did not <laughs> purchase this program to just be like oh well, you know i was too tired to do no no no. you were not about that there were a couple of times i know i had speaking gigs that had just yeah. come up on the calendar and you were able to love me through it and tell me my work still is has to be done has to be due and i love that another thing i love is when you talked about when you talked about time blocking mm -hmm. and it's something that's still a struggle because oh, yeah, yeah, it's never perfect it's never perfect it, right one of the things that i struggled with because i thought during a pandemic an economic downturn and a social unrest, I didn't really articulate it out there, but I was scared that I would never have a client again. I was scared mm -hmm. that how dare I reach out to big media companies? How dare I reach out to these people? How dare I? How dare I? And it was like, with you, you were like, radical action, radical outcomes. And it was like, you know what? Then I gotta be hella radical right now. And I gotta do the things that most people are not willing to do to live the life that I have. Remember when I moved into this house, I was on the third floor. Now this is all mine. You know, I moved <laughs> and it's a beautiful experience. My relationship with my pastor, it was never bad, but it was like, even he had to say, you've changed. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I see it in the way you dress. I see it in the way you talk. When he talked about the name of the book, I thought it was going to be like, Precious, what's the name <laughs> of that like, book? You got to put, put the curse word no, in the title. Me, yeah, so I was a little, like, so he said, you know, I saw the title of your book. And I was like, this, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> he was like, congratulations on being number one. And I was like, okay. And he said, because you say it, like when I quit, quit that job remember me when I would be on the phone I'd be like I can't take it anymore and you and when I quit the job he was okay with it he said you know if you can't pay rent you like, we'll, we'll work something out what well, landlord you know gonna do we'll do that for you yeah, because yeah. he saw that where I was going he saw mm -hmm. a lot of head just like you used to see with me mm -hmm. you know <laughs> I'm not sitting about her stressing about money anymore and that's in you. a pandemic when you can create your own economy you yes, can your you can economy, write your own paycheck. You, and that's amazing. Um, so I want to pivot you just a smidge. Uh, thank okay. you for that. Um, because like we we have a, a great story about like me walking you through my first worksheet. I'm gonna put a pin in that. But let's talk about how you made the transition from like so you you have you are an attorney by trade. So how did yes. you make that transition from attorney to entrepreneur to not just entrepreneur but serial entrepreneur? Girl, let me tell you something. After um, a couple of years, I was like this. Um, uh, I'm a litigator, <laughs> but uh, this ain't gonna be my life for 40 years. Okay, you were just this like not be my life. This, for 40 there's years. more to it than this. There's <laughs> gotta be more because if I gotta do the same case this over and over, you know, I, I like to switch. Listen, the hair tomorrow gonna be switched up. Come on. Oh now. yeah, it's gonna be a whole different so, hairstyle in like it's be a whole different hairstyle. So <laughs> for me, you know, remember I, I I met a very famous Hollywood actor. Was dating him. Mm -hmm. He's deceased now, but he inspired me to start my first company. And it was in the midst of I quit all my quit every legal position I ever had, and I just decided I'm going for curvy girls lingerie, which no one believed in. Everybody said you fat, you black. Mm -hmm. no ivy league degree they ain't putting fat girls on television where they put this girl on television so just embracing my difference and realizing there are a lot more women out there who dare 
to dream, but they need to see it done before they know it's possible. And since oh, I'm yes. a trailblazer, I just did it. So first pitch got me on MSNBC. Second pitch got me $500,000. Girl, it's ridiculous. And so, and so I just trust, I believed. So then like with Curly Girl, with Curvy Girl, that was your lingerie business that you appeared on Shark Tank with? Yes. With Curvy Girl, okay. Yes. So walk me through, like what was your Shark Tank experience like? You, you would think because I was on Shark Tank four years ago, I, I would I would be so over it, but no, it was mm-hmm. wonderful having a mm-hmm. private audition, um, flying out on September 11th, 2016, mm-hmm. filming September 15th. But it was wonderful because my the producers that I worked with, they just knew that I was gonna blow them away. And you know when you when I got there and the day that we filmed, I had my full figure divas plus size fashionistas. We were all in Beyonce mode. Ladies get in formation because they ain't ready for us. Big old afro, low cut. Canary okay. Hey, man. Hey, this is a family friendly show. Which- oh, girl, listen, you know, listen. <laughs> I'm messing with you. ABC ain't letting me cut up that bad. Like, <laughs> and so I, I went in there, and as that door opened, and you walked down that hall, I was going, girl, I was about to jam, and there was no music playing. So I'd be like, I'll just walk. <laughs> the door opens up, and you see the sharks, and you know they've already walked through the process of stepping on the X. So step on the X, and I just took that moment, almost like Whitney Houston, that one moment in time. Right, no more right. than I thought I would be. So I just started pitching and just Damon drip drip came through dripping drip drip with the diamonds. Mark Cuban, um, uh, Robert Hershevik, and just and just knowing that the whole world just opened up to me in that moment. Mm-hmm. And then when they thought I was done, okay, ladies, now let's get in formation. That door opened and my divas came out. And mm-hmm. when I tell you, Mark Cuban was like, "You go, girl." And Robert Hershevik said, you are a master. Mm-hmm. You're a master at your craft. And then just going through the questions and just feeling myself like I'm a 13-time national champion and not local, not hyper-local. I'm mm-hmm. a national champion. I'm a Black Enterprise Elevator Pitch champion. I've beaten the best in the world already. So this, I'm ready for y'all. And it was so such an amazing experience. And when it was over, I cried. Like, like cry. I remember producer. that live yeah. video. Cause like mm-hmm. we, you were taking us on the journey. Yes, I was. You, you were like doing all the behind the scenes. And I remember like crying, watching you cry in the live video. It was like, cause, okay. So then at what point, so I know that that is like, like this peak moment, but like it didn't end there. It was, so you had like a, a sharp turn <laughs> after that, but after this, you you've shut the shut you you've won the sharks. You got the sharks going. You you got got your investments going. This is a, you're going big, bad, bold, and all these things. So then, what happened? Well, you know, old boy had died, but I had never really dealt with his death very well. I started mm-hmm. drinking. My business partner and I fell out, and you know, I just I lost my mind. And and I will say this. I thought I was only accomplishments. And if I wasn't accomplishing anything, then I don't have value and I don't have worth. Mm. And so as I was going down and further down and letting alcohol become God to me, I couldn't function without it or anything like that. And little bit by little bit, I, I lost myself. I didn't have a reason to live. You know, I was ashamed you remember this. I was ashamed. I couldn't even talk to anybody because I was like, if I'm not doing that, I'm popping. I don't matter. And finally, I went back to St. Louis and I made a decision that on my 38th birthday, I was going to take, I was going to kill myself. And I, it wasn't for play play. It wasn't a joke. I didn't tell anybody. And that's exactly what I did on my 38th birthday is in the middle of the, in the middle of the morning. Um, I took a whole bunch of pills and drank extremely hard alcohol and watch some dark web horror stories on YouTube. And that was all I remember. And um, I woke up and uh, I was in the hospital and I was so angry because I was, I just wanted to kill myself. I just want to be dead because I felt like I don't have value. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was in a psych ward, you know, once they got really making sure I'm okay, put me in a psych ward. And if it wasn't for my friend who's a social worker, uh, Miss, Miss Joanna Francis, I wouldn't be here today. She found a way to get the hospital fees and everything paid. She had to put me on a bus and sent me back to New York. 
I was in a, the crisis respite for four days in a shelter and then I went to the Bowery Mission Women's Center for almost two years so there was no speaking you know mm -hmm. and I was ashamed and I was and and when I was in the shelter I mean when I was in the Bowery Mission Women's Center which is not a shelter they always stressed to me you're more important than anything that you want to accomplish you've already proven yourself but to yourself because you grew up so abused no one would you thought no one would care and then that's what I realized you cared Remember, you sent me things, you showed me love, you did all of that. And so that is why I'm here today, because I know who my real friends are and the ones who will kick my butt, the ones who, there's only one who's going to be a success bully. <laughs> well, I think that, and, and thank you for sharing that, because I think that that is a very vulnerable, and, and, and I know like it, before we got on the line that we talked about, like, well, how much of this do we want to talk about? And I I remember that really dark period of like, where is Precious? Where like, it wasn't just me looking for you. Right. There were a number of us that were looking for you. We had, we didn't, we couldn't get in touch with you. It was like your birthday on Facebook. We were all like, where's Precious? It was like a, a, a group of us that were looking for you. You were just, you fell off the face of the earth and I feared the worst. And then yeah. I was working out one random morning and I got a call from a 646 number. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, I better answer this. And it was you and you were okay. And my, and I, I just knew <laughs> I had never been so relieved because like we could not find you. We could not find nope. you. And so uh, when I say that you have the Phoenix rising from the ashes story, like you've been to the highs, you've been to the lows and you are uh, like your comeback tour has been amazing to watch and to be a part of, you know, cause like you, you've, you've always been in my mind influential and intelligent and and so driven at to see you come back from your lowest and like you just getting started on the comeback tour like the like to see what you've been able to do over the last three years has been remarkable and one of my favorite precious Keita stories and like um you were just you were finding your way back we had gotten back in touch with each other we knew what was going on and we were you know checking in quite often i was in new york for work and like this was side, I had just started Success Bully. It was a side hustle. So I snuck off away from work <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to meet you for coffee. And I had my goal set worksheet. And I was like, come on, girl, we doing this. <laughs> oh, woo, 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 woo. And we woo, mapped woo. out your 90 days. Girl, and you what? played no game. I was like, that's me. nice, but you were not even playing with that website. You need to do this, 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 and this. <laughs> <laughs> did it not come true? Did, 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 did and it not you come did true it, though? and you did it. And I think it's so funny. I had my little worksheet, and I came around the corner like I wasn't ready for that. I was thinking, oh girl, I'm gonna see my girl. You know, what I'm saying, mm -hmm. I like that. We gonna fix this. You so, like, girl, um, oh, we gonna have breakfast, but you, you got work to do. Like, yeah, I, but we gonna have these muffins, but you. <laughs> Yep. So then, like, so now you're, what you're working on right now is perfect pitches by Precious. So at what point yes. were you like, I am the pitch master. I can empower other people around this skill set that I have cultivated. That really happened this year. Okay. Because before, I don't want to say I, was, I felt like I was playing a role, mm -hmm. but it felt like when I spoke at Microsoft as their January 2020 game changer, mm -hmm. it became so clear to me that they don't just pick everybody. They picked me. And three years to the day, I, I almost died. Three years later on that same day, I'm their game changer. I, that's the goodness of God. And then as I walked into the, as I walked into the space, you know, I had all these people who brought me gifts and it was my 41st birthday this year. Mm -hmm. And, um, and three is a very powerful number. My grandmother was born in 1933. The 33rd president of the United States was Harry S. Truman from Missouri. Um, I'm the 33rd. <laughs> from Missouri. Nine. So I go in. So three is always Three remember, is always your I, number. <laughs> and don't forget my 33. So Indeed. I'm so tight. They had to give me the three twice. You heard Look, me? I can't. I can't with you. Come on. Friend. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> so what I was saying was, as I was standing in, that was the first time they ever sold out. It was mm -hmm. standing room only. They catered everything and, everything and I was just standing there and Errol who booked me, he's like, this is the first time we've ever seen the place like this. And I stepped into truly not talking about it anymore, but I am the killer pitch master. And I feel so strong in saying that, that run up on me because I'm ready for you. Run up on me. So then and let me run, tell it. 
<laughs> and then run up on me because we're going to do this. So then what is your big vision for PPP? Perfect Pitches by Precious. My big that, vision you know, is, my big vision, you know, sep- the big vision for Perfect Pitches by Precious is to have my own pitch training school. Mm-hmm. I still want to have a media company involved in that just because I do media so much now. I want to be able to create things like like a, a real elevator pitch or media pitch, investor pitch, like a real pitch show that doesn't focus on the things that Shark Tank does, but mm-hmm. really goes from the inside out. So it's not just invest, they, they focus on investments. I want to focus on other types of pitching to show how possible it is with no money, mm-hmm. no budget, and make yourself visible even in a bad time for the rest of the world. But you are, you having such an impact. Okay, I you feel like I gotta do, do a that. close up because you're doing the close ups. <laughs> oh, girl, yeah, you know, I for, thought I was gonna keep you here. I was like, okay. Yeah, like, hold on, everyone, I gotta get close. Yeah, I love you know, it. No, and then not only that, I've always wanted to host a, 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 a nationally syndicated show. I've done it okay. here in New York, but I wanna host a nationally syndicated show so we're going that focuses bigger, on, better, yeah, faster. I wanna do bigger, better, stronger, mm-hmm. and faster. And also not take away from people just giving you the glitz and glam story because as you know, with business, every decision is not pretty, it's not easy. And that mm-hmm. when you have a trusted network, like that's what you provide, not only just your coaching and your training, your innovative tips, tricks, and techniques for truly embracing entrepreneurship, whether it's a side hustle or whatever, but also where can you go when you're having a moment of struggle mm-hmm. and you have no idea what to do? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Yeah, I do think that that is the power of the group that like just based on the fact that we work with high performing type A's that we are a solutions oriented group coaching where like we'll talk about it like and everybody gets involved like okay well what are you struggling with how do we do this and then and, and I feel like when you're a CEO or you're building something, sometimes you're isolated on an island because you are in your own silo, you are in your own space and you're you're fig- trying to figure out all these moves on your own. And in, in our coaching, whether you are an entrepreneur or you're, you are working on a professional goal that is you know, to, to scale your corporate career, having a, a mind hive, a trusted mind hive is so critical, right? I love so, that mind hive. I love that mind word, hive. Yeah, mind yeah. Hive. Take that. I, I took it from somebody else. I, I, you uh, know, just, I said it like I made it up. Down. I set it up like I made it. So let's talk about goals for a second. So how have your goals had to shift uh, during COVID-19? Because I know we were kind of laughing about this before we went live about, yeah, we still making money during the pandemic. <laughs> we, are st- we still are. So with, with you, we were doing my 90 day for the, 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 the Bad Bitches and Power Pitches Live three day experience. Mm-hmm. And halfway through, I realized, okay, so it's not going to be physical. Even though I wanted to start it in January, mm-hmm. that's a bad time because it's cold, it's rainy, it's wet, and I don't know how long the virus or the, the, the pandemic is going to be around. Mm-hmm. So does that mean changing that up to um, a virtual event? What does that mean? Okay. Right? But at the same time, I also learned some other things about how to change my company around. Mm-hmm. So not only, not everyone can afford the high ticket things, but what could I do to provide for people who still want to work with me and may and, and may not be able to afford the, the high ticket things. So I started doing the two hour laser focused coaching session where they left with something tangible, not just talking a good game. Right, 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 right. right. Leave with a pitch, like a mm-hmm. real pitch that I created for you. Now you've gotten a taste of me and most people will move on to the higher ticket things because now they've gotten a yeah, juicy guess, morsel. Give them enough not to be even, dangerous. <laughs> yes. And then I started really approaching different um, organizations and foundations. Mm, okay okay i see the vision i see where you're going here and so and and so then i started getting hooked up into there's so many organizations and top nonprofits, not just regular the top nonprofits, foundations like four or five like who express an interest in working with me and you know what they went first linkedin ah! they looked at all of my recommendations so they knew I didn't write them all. Then, everybody, I didn't write right? any of them. Yeah, I didn't write any of them, right? Yes, I didn't write any of them. And so when they started seeing NBC Universal, when they started seeing um, mm-hmm. Google, Microsoft, they, they, that changed the game because they were like, okay, if she can get in there, clearly she can do that. And so what I would do is every month I would send them little emails like, this is my progress for the month. Just want to share that with you. Oh, I and like it. it. Your fortunes in the follow-up. The that, mm-hmm. Didn't you teach us that? We did and talk yes, about the we fortune were, and the follow-up. 
And yeah, everybody's heard it, but I don't think they've heard it the way you break it down. It's not just saying, hey, by my, you know, hey, we'd love to work with you. Saying the same email one month later, hey, we'd love to work with you, but really putting the tangibles in there, what I've been able to accomplish, even in the midst of a pandemic and an economic downturn and social unrest. So it really led to an explosion of more opportunities, which led to people wanting to become sponsors because they got to see how good I was. In fact, yeah. today I spoke, um, I spoke for the ICF. Now, you know, I'm not a, I don't have a certificate of coaching because nope. no one certifies in pitching. Right. Right. I've been speaking no since I was, since in I was 16. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So when they reached out to me and we did a whole hour. And when I tell you, mm -hmm. the woman in charge said, we're going to do something big together. And I was like, I was thinking to myself, I don't have a coaching service. She said, no, no, you have raw talent and you've demonstrated results. Like women were changed in this hour with you. I want to work with you. So think about that. Had I not put myself out there, radical action, action for radical, radical outcome. outcomes. <laughs> so it's not, people are just like, oh, I don't believe she's, she's speaking there. Let me drop these T's on you. <laughs> Bam, there's a flyer that I didn't create because y'all know I don't know how to create beautiful things. I know how to string words together beautifully in the poetry, but I can't make up NBC. I can't make up Microsoft. I can't make up LinkedIn. I can't make up any of that. So that's what you brought to the table with uh, with me. And again, since we're having to push out bad bitches and power pitches, and maybe it will have to be virtual, but now I have a clearer sense of mm -hmm. where I want to do. So there was immediate problems that, immediate, immediate problems that had to be solved, mm -hmm. and that was taken into account. Oh, yeah. And then the big, the big, bigger vision. Oh, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. So how are you tackling your big goal daily? How do you approach it daily? What does your, your day to day look like? So my day to day still looks like, you know, I have Tuesday through Tuesday through Thursday, just because of time blocking. Mm -hmm. I spend those time doing sales calls and some administrative tasks that I haven't delegated to the peeps around me, my team that I'm yeah, building. Yeah, there's yours, a team. I have a team. See, we got a and, team. We got a team. Listen, just trying to do it all by yourself. It's cute it's, in the beginning, and then it ain't cute no more when you have no time, right? No, it's not sustainable. So doing the sales calls, making sure that I'm following up, you know, a plan of following up and keeping that in a daily tracker, right? Yeah. Guess whose tracker I use? Yours. And it's always <laughs> saved. I, you know what I do? Copy. Change the date every 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 night. I do that just so I know exactly what my game plan is for the next day, right? Mm -hmm. And then also, how do you bring a team on when you are in the midst of everything? So I feel like I'm blessed with so many opportunities. Now my biggest challenge is which ones, which ones should I take, and which ones are just people trying to, lack a better term, cling on me in my life. Oh yeah, well, there's the the triage part of it, like making making having enough inbound that you can make choices. And that's what yeah, well, like I have when, choices. When you have rhythm, and, and that's all momentum. When it's mm -hmm. all momentum, it's all momentum. You get to a place where you're not looking for the work; the work is finding you. And that is what that that's is also a different what's feeling, right? It's it a is different a different feeling. feeling. So, oh, I'm so proud of you. So, um. So do you have any other productivity hacks that you would share with this group of badasses, our, 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 our goal, goal getters? The pro productivity hacks, I think you brought up so many and all of a sudden my mind just went blank, but I really love the time blocking and looking at what I said I was going to do versus what didn't get, get done. So you know how on our tracker, we mm -hmm. have the six things that must be done and then below that is other things that can get done. So mm -hmm. going through those six first has always been critical to me. If mm -hmm. I can't do nothing else, let me get through that. I and get then my if six I can't, done. And if, there's, and if there's one that I can't get through, then the other ones can't get done, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'll put reschedule for tomorrow. Bam, you know, it's going to go on the next schedule, right? And I always put done next to them and how long it took me to do it. Yeah. Because yeah, as we know, we never, we think we know how much time it's going to take. And then two hours later, you sit here like, mm. I thought that would take me 25 minutes. Here we are two yeah. hours later. Yeah. So that is always it. So your daily tracker, and it, trust me, everybody, it's not what you think. It's not like some planner and you're just, duh, duh, just throwing things out there, but it has to be crucial and dedicated to your 90 day goal and also other things that, that come that come in your sphere, right? <clears throat> my cal my acuity. That's where, oh girl, let me tell you something. Acuity is writing a story on me. Of course they are. Calendar, why, why, why wouldn't they? Oh, girl. You're and you know what you also talk to? Not just radical outcomes and radical action and radical outcomes, but 
even with what's been happening in the world, especially in social unrest, is when I see people speaking on panels and they're not reflective of what's going on in the world, mm-hmm. I go in. I oh. introduce myself. Like in case you were you looking know for me. a speaker. Okay, I like it. We go, we go, uh, Monica, did you hear that? <laughs> You should get we're, to know we're, gonna, we're gonna monitor that. We're gonna monitor yes. that. So then lightning round, get ready. Okay, so these are my, I'm gonna check and just make sure we have no uh, cl- uh, questions in the comments. Uh, Maggie and Monica, can you chat me if there's any questions for Precious? So then um, leaders are readers. Leaders are readers. Believe it. All right, so what are you currently reading? What's on, what's on your nightstand? What is on, girl, let me look over there. Girl, I got so many over there. But you know what? Still, Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. I always go back to that book. I know people love Think and Grow Rich, which is great. Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice, The Ultimate Sales Machine. Okay, Ultimate Sales Machine. Dancing with Disruption. Dancing with Disruption. Okay, okay. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's what we do. We dance with disruption every day. So those are the three that are in rotation right now for me. Another thing that I do is I support authors. So even if I can't read all of them, in a, in, a, in a short period of time, I love taking pictures with their work because I purchased it with my own money. Oh, yeah. I, don't, oh, don't give me nothing for free. I'll oh, buy yeah. it. And then um, I take a picture with their stuff and say, I appreciate that I have purchased something that I've been wanting for a while. I, I help with people's pre-orders. I love it. I awesome. love it because when you write something, you want somebody to take a picture with it and say, because what's what people do? do for me and I, it never gets old it's almost like if I was a, a singer hearing my song on the radio each and every day just know that when we can travel again and I make my way back to New York I have my my copy of bad bitches and I'm gonna need it autographed because like I buy my friends books and then I insist on them signing it and then of we got to do our photo op as well so then okay. what is your, your what is the advice that you're gonna leave right here for our goal getters for this community in the five days of focus challenge what is your parting advice for them your network is your net worth. You hear it all the time, right? But do you really know what that means? Who coaches need coaches. Entrepreneurs need coaches. Speakers need coaches. You have to determine who can get you to that next step. Because she's a goal setter and a go getter, that's totally different from people who just talk a good game you have a real opportunity to actually achieve the things you never thought possible. Don't think that a pandemic can stop you. It can't. What does that song say? All all the way up. And so Kida is a part of my net worth, as a part of my network. And if she can do that for me, y'all know I ain't ain't normally the one to be told what to do. I have to let her tell me that. And I just... (laughs) And also, fortune favors the bold. If you don't take bold and radical action right now to join or at least go to the website and see how different it, how different she comes to the table. This woman has been on national television. This woman has been a, a PR extraordinaire. Listen, you're not dealing with the average. She ain't trying to give you what she really about. I'm telling you, I know her. <laughs> and I would I don't recommend people that I would never work with or anything like that. So at the end of the day, your network is your net worth. Utilize it. You never know who has the connection to someone else. Am I right? Can you remember right. when you came to New York and I came to see you with, with your company? And yeah. I got the, well, thank girl. I ain't never forgot that. That was very fun for me. Girl, <laughs> I left that with I left that with shrimp in my pocket. What? <laughs> That's a story. That's so, a cocktail yeah. story. That's a cocktail story, y'all. I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry, sorry. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Fortune favors the bold. Yes. Thank you, Precious. You, uh, thank you for so being welcome. my friend. Thank you for being a part of my sister circle. Thank you for being one of my my biggest uh, successfully success stories. Thank, thank you for all the things, and thank you for sharing your story and being vulnerable and transparent with with all of us. Because, um, like, I think it takes a certain type of of um, you know sense of self and confidence to to really like open the kimono. Yeah. you know because some of us run around pretending like everything's okay so thank you for that uh once again this is precious l williams perfect pitches by precious i'm keita williams founder and chief strategist of success bully 
follow up with your concierges. So follow up with Maggie if your the letters of your name start with L through Z. Follow up with Monica if you are A through K. If you want more information on your 90 day way, our group coaching program that we're opening up, uh, please reach out. You can go check it out at the website, your90dayway.com. We are available and open for additional calls. Thank you once again, Precious. I'm going to, uh, everybody, we're going to leave you right there. We'll see you back here tomorrow because we got more bonus content because, of course, we're overachievers. The five days of focus have got to be longer than five days. So thank you so much. All right, y'all. Okay. Do, 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 do.